make sure we get it correctly. Perfect. It's Kara Kalkbrenner, K-A-R-A. Kalkbrenner is K-A-L-K-B-R-E-N-N-E-R. Okay. First female fire chief for the city of Phoenix. That's got to be awesome. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, though. What was it like growing up for you as a kid? I'm sure you get that all the time. Did you always want to be a firefighter? You know, I didn't. It's interesting because when I, when I grew up in the, I was born in the 60s, late 60s, and grew up, and, and I didn't even know female fi were with firefighters yet. And I was working at a, at a store called Malcolm's in Maryville Mall on 51st Avenue in Osborne, or Indian School, and this lovely couple came in, and their son actually was a firefighter for the city of Phoenix. And this couple kept coming in, they thought, have you ever thought about being a firefighter? And I said, no women aren't firefighters and I was probably 16 at the time and they said well our son's on the Phoenix Fire Department and his girlfriend is a firefighter she's the first female firefighter and it just resonated with me and so I went home and I started doing research and making phone calls and found out that the city of Phoenix had a cadet program which is volunteer and I started volunteering hundreds of hours in their learn not to burn program which is now our urban survival program so you go out into the community and you teach fire and life safety behaviors to kids and, um, and adults and elderly and I just got involved in this program and I was too young to be a firefighter so as a cadet I volunteered doing this type of um, events but then I also started doing you, you would go to the training academy and you would learn basically the functions of being a firefighter so you learn hose lays and search and rescue and, and how to do ladder um, coordinated ladder attacks and it just gave me me a truly understanding of what the whole essence of what firefighters do so as I was waiting to get old enough to take the test I just volunteered my time and I worked full-time and it was just a lovely opportunity for me to to reach out and give back to my community and wait to get this amazing opportunity to be a firefighter so you had your job but then you volunteered that's what you really wanted to do correct so really it's not work for right now. <laughs> I mean, it is. It I is. understand that. Correct. However, you're doing what you love. Exactly. Giving back to the community. There's nothing better than when you go home at night and you know that you made a difference in somebody's life. And, and the life I make is 1.5 residents of the city of Phoenix and then all the city employees and then being able to lead and manage um, 2,000 Phoenix firefighters to make sure that we have our core mission, that we're going out into the community and making a difference every day. Um, there are challenges, like in every other profession, but just knowing that we, f we remember our core mission and we show up to work every day to be functional in our community and make a difference. And that just, I sleep well at night and I'm just extremely blessed and humbled to be able to do this. Yeah. Do you, I was just going to ask. Yes. Is my nose running? Help? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are we good? Well, yeah, you're, you're just sitting there. Okay, here we go. Well, <laughs> action. <laughs> She's doing the hard part. Yeah. Thank you. So, going back to you, you're a native and you did grow up here. Being a native, that's got to be kind of cool to come to work every day from here. I mean, you know the ins and outs of the city, I'm sure, like the back of your hand. So, I do. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I grew up in West Phoenix. I went to Maryville. I went to Desert Sands, Sunset School, Desert Sands, went to Maryville and Trevor Brown, uh, Phoenix College, Ottawa University. So I definitely have, have stayed in the, in, the, in the city my entire life. And as you grow up in this community, you get to know it. So I saw it grow, you know, when I, again, born in the 60s, so you see the growth. And used to be Union Hills was so far north, and that's almost the center of city any longer. But just to see the growth and in, in, in being connected to your community and understand the challenges that the city of Phoenix has gone through for the last 50 years of my life. And, and I think that's been very helpful, and especially in the fire service. So I'm connected nationwide to other fire chiefs, and you talk about challenges that they fight, what they face, but primarily is I understand the city of Phoenix. I understand the challenges that we have here and being able to modify our deployment model and the type of services we provide because we know what the community needs. And I think my benefit is growing up in this community and understanding that and being exposed to it for my entire life. How was it when you first joined the cadet program and then got into the department? Because you had said yourself, girls aren't in the fire department, they can't be firefighters, and then someone told you, yes, they can. Was it a little intimidating for you when you when you started to get your foot in the door and, and do it? Intimidating is probably a good word. Um, I think uh, typically we're intimidated when something we're not familiar with it, as human beings. And getting into this program, and there was other women in the cadet program, but as I was coming on, more women were getting hired before me that were of an eligible age, and they were becoming successful firefighters. So I think it was intimidating, but again, I surrounded myself with good people. The City of Phoenix Fire Department, Alan Brunacini, who was the chief, the 
two chiefs ago, he created an environment for people to be successful. So the cadet program was it was an avenue to learn about the fire service, learn about the community, and be successful in, in your trade. So it was intimidating, but it was a lot of hard work, and you proved yourself. And and again, now I'm I'm a volunteer, so people are seeing my my work ethic, they're seeing my attitude, they're seeing my humbleness. They saw everything that Kara brought to the table. And with that being said, is that's typically in an interview you don't get to see all of that. So I was able to prove myself before I ever got to that interview process, which was clearly helpful for me to make that transition into a firefighter. Did you ever see yourself becoming fire chief? Not when I first came on. You know, again, I was 16 when I started this. I got hired at 19, so you start looking at, you know, you want to be good at your profession, so I want to be a good firefighter. And then I t took the engineer's test, which drives the fire truck, so I wanted to be a proficient, capable engineer, and then a fire captain. It was probably mid-90s when I got exposed to the next element of leadership and management in the fire service that I started looking at what my next career move was going to be, because I wanted to get really good at what I did, but I also knew that I had more to give. Going back to school, I'm a lifelong learner. I always, I dug into the profession. I start looking at issues in the community or issues in the fire service where I think I could make a difference. So what I did again is I just continued to reach out to different people, talk to different people in different areas. Because as a firefighter, you typically work in operations, which is going out boots on the ground, you're responding to fire and medical calls, and you're helping people. Well, the Phoenix Fire Department works significantly larger than that. We have fire prevention, we've got EMS, we have our training division, we've got operations, we have all these different areas that are very instrumental to being su successful of a f for the fire department. So I started learning so much more of what the fire service offered and I started seeing areas that I could be beneficial in. So I just kind of, my career path has been working with people that make me think outside of the box. They, they, de they don't look like me, they don't act like me, they don't think like me, but they challenge me to make sure I'm doing the best I can and I'm challenging myself to be the best in my profession. So I started to see so much more that was out there and it was just a, a tremendous opportunity to start looking at how I could make a difference. You know, I think successful people always look at successful people and how they do it, but you also look at not, success, not so successful people and how I'm not going to do that. And the fire service is no different. So I started looking at those opportunities and thought this was just such a great opportunity for me. I have a lot to give. I care care about our members. I'm safety oriented. I support women in the fire service. I support, you know, minorities. I, I just I'm just that type of person that I care, give back, and it's just been a, a tremendous ride for me. Great journey. What would looking back at your career and even even uh, personally, what would you say is one of the biggest challenges in your life? You know, there's, ch there's challenges every day when we get up in the morning. And I, I always, I look at challenges as opportunities. So I've been faced with a lot of different opportunities in my career and it's how you face those opportunities. It's dealing with adversity, it's dealing with challenges, it's people, dealing with people that may not like you. It's dealing with um, a physically or a mentally challenging opportunity that you just overcome. And I, I deal with those issues by again, being good at what I do, but also reaching out to people that can help me. Um, there, there's a saying, John Wayne had a saying, being, being, um, great, shoot, stop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is like my favorite thing and I always screw it up when I start to say. <laughs> it's like telling a joke. It is. You and I'm terrible like, joke oh skill. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, John Wayne has a, has a, has a saying that you say, courage is being scared to death and doing it anyway. And I, and I think that's what it is. To me, that's courage and dealing with challenges or opportunities or whatever adversity, however we want to say it, but it's having the courage to deal with it. Don't run away from it, hit it head on, but make sure you're good at what you do and get the resources to make you better. You may get a little dirty in the process, you know that, Absolutely. but you know, you gotta do it. <laughs> well, congratulations on receiving this award. What did you, I mean, you. obviously, I'm, I'm sure you're excited and, and honored to receive it, but what feelings come first come to you when you were being honored by the YWCA? Well, it's, it's such an amazing organization. I mean, empowering women and erasing, and erasing racism is, is such a wonderful tenet that they have and that they would reach out to me as a fire chief in the city of Phoenix and honor me in this way to me was just extremely humbling. Um, the women on the board are remarkable. Again, I, you're going back and looking at what the tenants are and what they do for the community is that they would take the time to reach out to me as a, as a fire chief for the city of Phoenix to, to give me this award is extremely humbling and just I'm so grateful. I just, I'm just honored to be among the, the, the other women that 
it came before me, but also in this group, there's six of us that are just tremendous women, and I'm just honored to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. How important do you see an organization such as the YWCA? You know, I think anything that any any group or company or nonprofit that gives back to the community and truly looks at, at what they're doing. There's there's a lot of nonprofits out here in, in Arizona and Phoenix particularly, but one that really reaches back to the community and makes a difference. And I think that's what's important is is there's a lot of people that feel good to give money and they feel good to give volunteer their time, but to really know what the community needs and make a difference with the people that they serve, I think that is so important and that's why the why do you say to me why do ECA to me is so important and why I'm so honored to be involved in this. You know, we have we have come a long way as far as um, as far as racism, as far as equality for women. Where would you like to see it go from here? I think, you know, women women have been honored for centuries. I mean, and they've done amazing things. And and again, I think it's women coming together and working together and sharing experiences, the positive experiences. Leave that leave that baggage at the door. You know, we're, we're moving forward. Look through your windshield. Don't look in the rearview mirror. We've heard all these sayings, but I just think it's an opportunity for women to come together and share experiences and tell each other is there's, there's nothing we can't do. The only thing that limits our ability to do things are Fear is one of them, but secondly is our physical abilities. Not everybody can be a firefighter, not everybody can be a police officer, not everybody has the mental capacity to be a CEO of a technical company. There's so many things, but I, I think working together and, and supporting each other and telling women that reach out and find something you love. Don't just decide you want to do something because it sounds sexy or fun or makes money. It's got to be something that it's got to be true to yourself and you want to give back. And I think something like the YWCA, that's what they do is they bring women together and they showcase the successful women and they put us out there so other women can look at what we're doing. And then the racing, the racing racism pieces, I mean, that goes without saying. It's like we've come so far, but we have so far to go. It's like we're it doesn't matter what you look like or who you are. It's like we are people, we're human beings, and we all think differently, and, and that to me is the diversity, is it doesn't matter the color of our skin, it doesn't matter our gender, it's, what, it's who we are inside. Well, in your line of work, it certainly doesn't matter. You're just saving lives. I exactly. mean, you're just helping the community. Yes. Yeah, we respond 24-7 without prejudice. You call 911 and we go out and we solve your emergency. That's that's what we do. That's, that's our mission, that's our core, our value. What? Do you have a, an experience, I mean, looking back at your career, and you probably have a ton, but is there one memory that comes to mind, one story that that um, just had an impact on you? Um, I mean, I know every day can, can have an impact on you, but um, maybe looking back at your cadet services, uh, some, some specific example? I do have a lot of stories, and a lot of them are again going out in the community and making a difference. But um, I actually told this women, this group of women, when we all got together with the board, and I don't typically share this story, but it, it, it resonated with me, and it's it's why I'm in this position I am now. But as a cadet, I had, you know, as a young woman, I was 16, 17, 18 years old, and you you're going and you're pouring your heart out and you're volunteering and you. you make a career path or a choice and you're moving forward and you're doing everything you can to be successful, well some people don't want you to be successful. Some people would rather, instead of them being better at their trade or they want to pull you back, they don't want, they're not going to let the reins out on you. They want to pull you back but they're not going to make themselves better. And when I was a cadet there were, um, people started rumors about me and it was just because they could. It's, there was nothing stopping them from doing it that I was not a nice person and I was doing a set of things and it was extremely hurtful and as a young woman you're brought up to you know protect your reputation because that's all we have is our reputation and we have to protect it at all costs and I, I was like do I really want to get into this profession where people feel so candid to talk poorly about other people because that wasn't the way I was brought up you know if you can't say something nice don't say anything at all and it was it resonated with me and I was ready to hang it up I was just like I'm done I, mean, I, said, I don't need this I don't need to go through this as a young person I don't need this reputation I don't want my family to hear this and I had a, a captain who was down at the, one of our cadet captains and I told him I said I'm done and he looked at me he said you're gonna let somebody screw you out of a job and I just sat back and it just resonated with me because it was so true that's what they were trying to do and I could have walked away and they would have won. But what I did is I said, no, and now I'm the Phoenix Fire Chief. And I, to me, that's very profound and it's very, um, it's something that 
I had to work hard to do that, to overcome it, that I just, you know, said, I'm not going to allow somebody else to basically screw me out of a job. I'm going to work hard, prove myself, and make a difference, and, and be bold in this community, be courageous. Have you ever, have you ever seen that person again? <laughs> the captain? <laughs> no, I met the person who wanted to screw you out of a job, um, you know? <laughs> he doesn't work for the Phoenix Fire Department any longer. Oh, okay. Um, but the captain does, and he's tremendous, and I'll, and I'll always be very thankful for him to, to have the faith in me to, in the, to tell me that. Because it could have been easier if it's like, oh, I don't, he doesn't need this drama either. And he didn't. He just said, no, you, this, is, this is your path. This is your journey. Well, that leads so. me to my next question. Because I was going to ask you, who were your role models growing up? And who are they now? <sighs> well, growing up, before I got in the fire service, you know, I, I, was, a, I, I was different. I was... And I was, <laughs> when I was in sixth grade, I was five foot nine. When I was five foot 11 in 10th grade, I mean, I just, I wasn't your typical person. I was heads and shoulders above everybody else. So I, I reached out to people that would support me, but not enable me also. And it, it started with my parents, you know, my mom and dad, and, and they're no longer with us, but they were my biggest support fan, my biggest fans. They looked at me too, and they said, you know what, you are different. My neighbor, my best friend was 95 pounds, five foot tall. I'm, I was 5'9", 150 pounds. It's, we were just this kind of Mutt and Jeff looking people. And, and sometimes you're like, well, why am I different? Because all my friends look like her. And they're just like, you're different because you're special. You know, you were given this gift and you're gonna do something good with it. And that resonated with me. Mom was a nurse, my grandmother was a nurse. Those, they gave back to the community, they were public servants. Um, so those were, those were my role models growing up. And, you, and then once I got in the fire department, there were fire chiefs, Alan Bernasini, again, prolific fire chief, known across the country and the world for what he did for the Phoenix Fire Department and the fire service as a whole. Denny Compton, he is a retired assistant chief for Phoenix, went to Mesa to be the police the fire chief, and now he does consulting around the country. Again, very prolific, and these people were my support. They're the ones that reached out and said, you have something, and they gave me projects as a young firefighter to do on my days off and to make a difference in the community. And, and those folks will all always be very, um, very thankful for what they did because again, they saw something in me and that's what I do now. So I learned that from them as I see something in people and I tap them on the shoulder and say, you have something, there's something special about you. Go out and make a difference. And whether it's in the fire service or, it's at, or if it's the police department and even the fire department, you don't have to be a firefighter. You can go to the alarm room and be a dispatcher. We need personnel clerks, we do HR, we have a variety of civilian positions that are just as important to the fire department as firefighters because they have to support what the firefighters mission is. So again, I, th these role models growing up, mom and dad, you know, Alan Brutus Dennis Compton, um, people I work with now, you know, Ed Zucker is our city manager, Melton Dehoney is my boss. These people just continue to support our mission. They support the city of Phoenix and we all love what we do. And we're, at, we're, we're getting done. I hope you don't mind me asking a little bit more questions. But um, how have you, how have you seen the advancement of women and the representation of women uh, in the fire department? Well, it's interesting. The national average of women in the fire service across the country is 3.5%. So that's considerably low if you look at the national average. But again, you have to look at what we do. We work 24-hour shifts. We're away from our families. If you have children, um, relationships, it's, it's different. It's something that you have to truly vet out before you get involved in the fire department. But the Phoenix Fire Department, we're honored because we, we're about 4.8%. So we're considerably higher, not considerably, one, you know, almost 2% higher, 1.5% higher than the national average, as I'm proud of that. But my goal is to continue to raise that bar to get more women in the fire service. And, and a lot of, it's interesting, I will still run into people that say, I didn't know women were firefighters. It, it's just, it's ironic to me, but again, with the small numbers is you don't see women on every fire truck and you don't, so without being exposed, people are not aware. So I think raising the exposure and again, telling people is this, and going out and reaching out to people, is this something you're interested in? You know, you reach out to, to high school women to start looking at, it's a path it, and it has to, it's a physical fitness, it's a very physical job, you've gotta be in shape and it isn't, you don't get in shape to get on the job, it has to be lifelong. You have to stay physically, mentally and spiritually fit for your entire career, whether it's 25, 35 years. So 
it's it's a it's a commitment to be good at what you do, but also be physically fit and mentally fit and be able to deal with the, the stresses of the job. And they're stressful. You know, we go on a calls where people are having the worst day of their life. They've lost a child, their house burnt down, they lost a family member to a shooting, an accident. It is we don't go on people that are having a good day, but we make a difference in their lives and we we are able to do something and help them to overcome whatever they're dealing with that day. So again, educating women to what, what the job entitles, um, making sure they know about it at a young age so they can stay in school, be physically fit, protect your reputation, <laughs> do what you need to do to be effective in, in your career path. Awesome. Do you have anything? That was great. Yeah, that was did we great. touch on whatever? Did you have anything no, additional you want to add? Or? That was perfect. Thank Just you. Let me run. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. I think that was awesome. I think you missed anything. You got it all. And I, I must say,